No, this isn't conceptual art of Elon Musk's dream for a future self-sustaining presence on Mars. It would appear that there's another extremely rich organization that has designs on colonizing Mars for the long term, and that would be the United Arab Emirates. And this particular city is going to have a dress rehearsal, so to speak, here on Earth, and they're spending over 130 million US dollars on it. The idea is to build a series of self-sustaining biodomes in a very harsh environment, namely the deserts of the Middle East, and to experiment with a variety of self-sustaining recycled water, air, crops, food production of various types, pretty much everything that a Martian colony would require, because the UAE has ambitions to replicate this city on the Red Planet in a century. Now, a century doesn't exactly match the SpaceX timeline, but nevertheless, everything that the UAE learns from this experimental biodome will probably be very useful to Elon Musk's ambitions, including things like radiation-resistant transparent panels for the domes themselves. But before you can run, you have to learn how to crawl. And tomorrow, the UAE will be launching their first probe to Mars. As a matter of fact, the first spacecraft of any kind that the Middle East has launched to another planet. Now, I have a subscriber from the United Arab Emirates who told me about this particular mission over three months ago, and it really pissed me off at the time because the mission was not getting a great deal of press and almost nobody knew anything about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and re-release this video tonight with a few modifications. I hope it's something that you folks enjoy, and I'm also going to be referring the actual streaming of the launch tomorrow over to my friends at Space News Pod, because for one thing, they're fellow Patreon members, but also they do an extremely good job on these types of events, much better than I ever could. However, that being the case, if you'd like to commemorate this particular event with me, well, I have some merchandise that you can find linked in the description along with the Space News Pod event to help you commemorate the event and also to support the channel. So, let's get going on the original video. Good morning, everyone, and here we go, part two of my double header. And I'm having some serious misgivings about this, but still, I'm going to push ahead. So, I really wasn't planning on talking about this particular subject, but one of my subscribers is actually from the Middle East, um, from a particular country in the Middle East, an extremely advanced nation, the United Arab Emirates, and he told me about a Mars mission, which I had never heard of before this. But the more I've learned about it, the more I've come to realize that this particular mission is going to be extremely critical to any future efforts to colonize Mars. I have to admit, it pisses me off a bit that I know so little about it and it's gotten so little media attention. But I wouldn't be the angry astronaut if I didn't get pissed off. So let's get going to the Mars mission you never heard about. I may make a few comments, but for the most part, I'm going to let the mission team describe their project. Although their major partner is my alma mater, the University of Colorado, so I may have a couple things to say. Mars is a mysterious planet that has always fascinated people on Earth. 
we still have plenty of unanswered questions. For instance, we know there is water on Mars, but only in the form of ice and vapor. Water can't exist on Mars as liquid because the atmosphere has become too thin. Oxygen and hydrogen, the building blocks of water, are being lost into space. We also know that Mars has some exotic weather, like massive dust storms, similar to those on Earth, which are more brief and localized. On Mars, the dust storms can engulf the entire planet and rage on for months. Our science mission is to produce the first ever truly global picture of the Martian atmosphere. This is the first holistic study of the Martian climate and how the layers of its atmosphere fit together. We will model the connections between all the different components of the Martian climate, including all the temperatures, winds, dust, and clouds. Scientists on Earth will use the data that will be sent by the probe to build a complete dynamic picture of the Martian climate. This is something that has never been seen before. Our data will give the international science community a deeper and richer understanding of the Martian atmosphere. First, there's a galaxy to be able to determine if there is life on it. We will share the data freely with more than 200 universities and research institutes around the world. This is our contribution to human knowledge. We want the orbiter to arrive at Mars in 2021, the UAE's 50th anniversary. 100,000 kilometers per hour. Then the spacecraft will separate from the launcher. It will unfold the solar panels and point the spacecraft toward the sun to charge the batteries. The journey across the solar system will take around seven months. As it travels, the spacecraft needs to figure out its location. There is no GPS in deep space. So the spacecraft will use star trackers to navigate using patterns of constellations. This is similar to the way our ancestors used the stars to find their way in the desert and at sea. This is the point where orbiters usually get lost, so they'll have to be really precise. When the spacecraft gets close to Mars, it'll have to use its thrusters as brakes. It'll need to slow down to 14,000 kilometers per hour to enter orbit. This will be a tense time at mission control in the UAE. The thrusters must fire for 30 minutes at precisely the right time. If anything goes wrong, the spacecraft will pass Mars and the mission will fail. Both we and the Russians have had this happen to us. But we can't control the spacecraft in real time from Earth. When it's so far away, signals can take more than 14 minutes to arrive. Its brain will be sophisticated enough to make its own decisions. Look back in history. The Middle East was once a powerhouse for innovation and science. Muslim civilizations were once pioneers in mathematics and astronomy. This will be the first ever Arab Islamic mission to another planet. The Emirates Mars mission will have a major impact and a legacy here in the UAE. That's because of the approach that we took to planning and building this mission. The easy way to do it would have been to go and buy technologies and expertise from big space agencies and companies. We decided to do For one reason, I'm so proud and excited to be part of the mission as an Emirati and as an Arab. It's very symbolic for an Arab and Muslim country to launch an interplanetary mission. We have taken a step beyond just looking at the skies. We are going there. I think it will change the way young people look at their region. It will help us think positively and see hope and opportunity. If a small young Arab nation is able to reach Mars, truly anything is possible. This is a huge moment for a small nation. I have to admit, I am fired up. Now, of course, this is all well and good, but, I mean, NASA is sending an impressive rover to Mars in 2020 as well. I mean, what does this have that NASA doesn't? Why is it so important? Well, let me explain. As the video indicated, this is the first Mars orbiter designed specifically to study the weather. In fact, all the instrumentality on this probe is designed specifically for that purpose. Why? Because of Martian dust storms, primarily. 
amongst other reasons, but dust storms represent a tremendous threat to any expedition or any attempt to colonize this planet because they block out the sun and thus cut off our source of power to our solar panels. Not only that, they represent a significant threat to anybody unfortunate enough to get caught in one. Now, of course, studying the Martian weather has many other purely scientific benefits as well, but as I said before, Martian dust storms are going to represent a significant threat to our colonization efforts. Sometimes they can blanket the entire planet for close to a year, and that can be quite devastating. Now, of course, the easy solution is why not use nuclear power instead of solar panels? Well, here's a problem to that that a lot of people don't talk about. If we use nuclear reactors, we're going to have to take fissionable materials along with us, which is dangerous in case there's a failure with the launch. Or if we don't take them along and attempt to mine them on the planet, well, we don't know if Mars has that, but let's say that Mars does. If you mine fissionable materials on Mars, you can not only use it for nuclear reactors, you can use it for nuclear weapons. And that is the last thing we need, is competing colonies on Mars with nuclear weapons. This planet needs to stay nuclear free, plain and simple. So a little while ago, I said I was pissed. Well, I still am. And here's why. We have heard almost nothing about this mission. At least I haven't. I think I've said that a few times at this point. And do you know why? It's because we don't expect this. We in the West, anyway. We don't expect this sort of thing coming out of this region of the world. All we expect is strife and bloodshed and fighting, and that's not the reality. The reality of this region are people just like us, people who want the best for themselves and their children and want to embrace what the what rest of the world is embracing, and the small little country of the United Arab Emirates is setting a fantastic example in terms of what this region of the world should be focusing on exploring the solar system and embracing the sciences for the good of their people. And we in the West need to embrace this. You know what they call this mission, by the way? They call it hope. Hope for millions of young Arabs who have none. It needs to change. And it's not going to change until it changes worldwide. The exploration of space is not an American thing, or a European thing, or an Asian thing, or a Russian thing. It is a human thing. And the only way that that attitude is going to become prevalent across the entire planet is if we make it so. So let's get started. And by the way, here's your hidden challenge. Put in the comments whether or not you think there is hope. Can this region of the world embrace the exploration of space like so many other countries have? Because I believe they can. And they're proving it right now. But I'd like to see your opinions as well. Each comment that appears, five entries into the giveaway. So, until next time, stay angry about space.